The skin layers are very very important to know. Once you understand and memorize these skin layers and the cells that form them, you will have no difficulty understanding any skin condition. If we take any skin sample, we will see three layers. The epidermis, which is the upper part, the dermis, and the lower part, which is the subcutaneous fat. We're mostly interested in the epidermis, which itself is subdivided into more layers. The epidermis, from top to bottom, we will see stratum corneum, then stratum lucidum, then stratum granulosum, then stratum spinosum, and finally stratum basalis. These are the layers that form the epidermis. The epidermis with the dermis and the subcutaneous fat together form the skin. And by the way, the skin is the largest organ in the body. I have asked students in classes before, and the common answers include the brain, the lungs, and sometimes the liver, but the true answer and the correct one is the skin. Now let's look at the function of each of the layers forming the epidermis. The lowermost layer is the stratum basalis. This layer is formed by stem cells lying over a basement membrane. Keep in mind, this basement membrane basically separates the epidermis from the dermis. The stem cells themselves are cuboidal and constantly dividing. They form all the upper layers. They connect to the basement membrane using the hemidesmosomes. We will discuss the hemidesmosomes and the desmosomes in the cells junction video. Keep in mind, the melanocytes that give the skin its color are found in the stratum basalis layer. This is very important for exams. The next layer, stratum spinosum, is quite thick, about 8 to 10 cells layers, and they're formed by polyhedral or irregular cells. These cells have many processes or projections going outward. They're connected together by desmosomes, which again we will discuss in the cell junction video. This layer has the dendritic cells, which are antigen-presenting cells important for immunological reactions. The next layer, stratum granulosum, has two very important granules. The keratohyaline granules and the lamellar granules. The keratohyaline granules contains keratin, which is a precursor that eventually cross-links and forms bundles. This gives the skin a very tight and stretched character. The lamellar granules secrete glycolipid that sticks the cells together. It works sort of as a glue. So the whole stratum granulosum layer is very important for the skin character. It is responsible for the strength of the skin. The stratum lucidum is a very thin skin layer that doesn't have a very significant function. And finally, the thickest layer, the stratum corneum, which is about 20 to 30 skin layers and it is the uppermost part. This layer is made up of dead keratinocytes, which is also known as inoculated squamous cells. So basically squamous cells without a nucleus. These cells, when they were alive, they had a lot of protein inside known as defensin. Now that they're dead and they're the outer part layer, this protein is secreted outward and it's a part of the first immune defense. This layer can become very thin or very thick, depending on the usage. Some areas like the lips, for example, we don't need to be a lot of thickness, so this layer will be very thin. And other parts where there is heavy repetitive movement will become callous or thickness will increase. Now let's see some important terminology. If there is an increase in the stratum corneum layer, we call this hyperkeratosis. We see this in calluses and psoriasis. If there is an increase in the thickness or the number of the layers in the stratum granulosum area, we call this hypergranulosis. We see this in Lucian planus. And if there is an increase in the spinosum area, we call this acanthosis. We see this again in psoriasis, 
and also an Acanthosis nigricans. If there is an abnormal keratinization or premature keratinization, this is known as dyskeratosis, and this is a sign of squamous cell carcinoma. The uppermost layer, stratum corneum, is formed by dead cells, and it should not have any nuclei, but if it does, this is known as a parakeratosis, and it's a sign of psoriasis and actinic keratosis, which is potentially cancerous. If there is a lot of fluid trapped within these layers, it will become spongy, and this is known as spongiosis. We see this in eczematous dermatitis. And sometimes there will be separation between these layers, meaning that we have some free space in between the layers, and this is known as acantholysis. We see this in pemphigus vulgaris. Now that we understand the skin layers and the skin cells, let's study the skin junctions which connect these layers and these cells together. Use the link below to get access to the full dermatology course. This includes more than 60 lectures with study notes and revision cards. You will also get access to the flashcards and MCQs. Thank you for watching.